Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. For the third episode of Mixtape Masters, we're heading into the post-production phase. So we've got a great sounding mix that we've recorded. Now we're gonna take it into software, we're gonna work with it and tweak it until it sounds really clean and really consistent throughout the whole mix to give you that proper professional sound that we're looking for. Let's get to it. There are tons of options out there when it comes to actually choosing which software you're gonna use for your mastering. At the very high end, you've got stuff like Isotopes Ozone. This is a phenomenal bit of software. They sent it to me to try out and it's so powerful. So many modules and ways of working with and tweaking your sound, but it's probably overkill for what we're doing here. You know, you can use it for mastering your DJ mixes, but it's very expensive. So unless you're actually gonna use it in the studio for mastering tracks in general, it's probably gonna be a bit too much. I've always been a big fan of Adobe Audition. It's in the Adobe Creative Suite, so it fits into my workflow, and it reminds me very much of Cool Edit Pro from back in the day, which was awesome. There is also Sony SoundForge. A lot of people are still fans of that, and that's a great bit of software too. There's cheaper options like Reaper as well. You can use Ableton Live as well, although it is really just a DAW. You can actually get in there, turn off snapping, turn off warping, and you can use their tools like the glue compressor to tighten up the mix and make it much cleaner. And you've got the envelopes in there as well. So I do like using Ableton Live for some aspects of this too. Now, in this video, we're gonna be dealing entirely with Audacity. It's free, it's open source, so all credit to the people behind it who actually put such a powerful bit of software out there for free. Uh, it doesn't quite fit my workflow because I'm just not used to it, you know. It works in a different way to Audition and so on, but it's really powerful and it's free. So we're gonna use that for this one. Let's get to it. Okay, with this mix, I'm just starting from scratch. I've loaded into Audacity. We're gonna keep it nice and simple for this one. So we're gonna zoom in on the intro, first of all, because we wanna top and tail this thing. So I'm just gonna click through. I can't really use Audacity. I'm no good at this. Right, let's go back to the very start. There we go. And I just wanna chop off the very beginning. So we wanna go right up to the edge. I'm gonna zoom in a bit further there. Maybe leave like half a second or something before the very first sound. But there you go, I'm gonna delete that out. So now if we go back to the full view, we can see. So it's gonna kick in very quickly at the beginning. You don't want a big gap. And then we get to the end. We're gonna do the same sort of thing over at the end as well. Now on this, we've got a fade out. So let's chop off the end to begin with. And then we're just gonna do a fade on there. So what we do with the fades in this, we do an envelope. Um, so we basically go up to here, we click into this blue bar to make an envelope point. So we put one there and then one there, and then I'm gonna just bring that one down. So we're just doing a nice smooth fade at the end up to nothing. So let's play that back now. Nice and simple. Now let's go back and get an overall view of this thing once again. So as we can see now, this is a mix I've just assembled in Ableton Live. I didn't spend a lot of time on it, did it very quickly, and the levels are kind of all over the place. Now we've got to deal with this basically because we've got these big peaks over here. Whoops, starting to come out of that mode. We've got these big peaks over here and over here. This whole section in the middle seems to be quieter, and then we go louder again at the end with a big peak. So there's a few ways we can deal with that. The first thing you might want to do is just find a point where it kind of changes and goes to a quieter bit for a minute. So this whole section is quieter. So we might just want to do a gentle fade again with that envelope tool around about here somewhere. So let's go back into the envelope. Let's zoom in a little bit actually first. So that's our kind of point. We want everything before this to be a bit more quiet and everything after it to be kind of leave it as it is. So we can go into that envelope tool and let's put some points on there. Now this breakdown obviously is a good opportunity to make that change without people noticing too much. So let's just get that back up to zero. And we want it to be kind of gradual. So I'm gonna move back, just that's about 10 seconds back in the track. And we're gonna just bring it down just a touch. And the good thing with Audacity, I must say, is that it does give you this visual instant feedback on what you're doing with the level. So we can see now that's looking pretty good. Let's go. And obviously you've got to use your ears here, not just the actual sound itself. So we're looking at the VU meters up there, but I'm listening. We've still got a big peak there. And now this bit. 
fairly consistent, but that's still a bit loud, so I'm just going to stop it. I'm going to bring that down a bit further still and maybe drag out that fade just a bit more. So we're peaking about minus six over there. We're peaking about minus six over here. Again, let's look at the whole picture. So now that side, this section over here is looking more consistent with the middle section. We are getting a bit loud again at the end. So let's do a similar thing over here. So it's that big peak there, about 14 and a half minutes, and then it gets louder again. So let's just put in, we're still in the envelope mode. So I'm going to use that mix where it gets really loud. I'm going to use that as an opportunity to bring my level down and it will sound smooth because it's on a transition. So I'm just going to bring it down a bit over there. Let's look at the whole thing. So that's now looking pretty good. I'm just going to do then one towards the end. Now, don't forget we did that fade already at the end. So I need to zoom in right over there at the end. So I don't mess up my fade that I already did. There we go. I want to use that same point. I'm just going to bring that down there. So it's about level and each time you want to probably just zoom in to make sure that you're not messing with your actual fades because you want those fades to be smooth. You don't want to have dramatic shifts in the volume. And again, just use your ears, listen back to the section. You know, these very big peaks, we're going to deal with those with a bit of limiting in a minute, but let's... Uh, I mean, to be honest, if I'd done a mix like this, that was this up and down in terms of volume, I might well just do it again. Um, you know, this is pretty extreme example. You know, really don't want to be fixing more than kind of one or two little things that are wrong with it. Now that's looking fairly consistent across the board. Might be able to go lower still over on the right hand side. Let's do that. So it's a combination of using your eyes and your ears at once. So we're peaking around about six there with pretty much everything maybe slightly over but that'll do the job so let's go back out look at the whole picture again okay that's all very nice now the good thing is if you're working with a lossless file which of course you're going to be you've recorded in AIFF or you've recorded in um, WAV something like that then you can just keep exporting this back and forth and take a look at your work so I'm just going to export that out as an AIFF file Okay, so we've now got our file into Audacity and it's looking a lot more consistent in terms of levels. It's not perfect, but it'll do the job. We have still got these big peaks that we need to worry about. Now, what we're going to do is normalize it first of all. Now, it's very important. This is one thing that I've picked up from a guy called Multiplier who does great Ableton live tutorials on YouTube. Check them out. Um, basically, he, it's got a video where he talks about why you should always master to minus 1.5 dB when you are dealing with mp3 so if you're exporting to mp3 at any point you should master to minus 1.5 db i'm not going to go through why but i've checked it out following having seen his video and it definitely seems pretty accurate to me so normally i'd have minus 1.5 in there we're actually going to go to 0 db and let's bring it up so i'm going to just all this does the normalize brings up the actual peak levels to 0 db so that's boosted the volume overall on the mix. Now, what I'm going to do then is take advantage of that minus 1.5 dB thing. I'm actually going to use a limiter on here. I'm going to use a hard limit. You don't want to use the clipping because that tends to distort in here. And I'm basically just going to bring it down to minus 1.5. So anything above minus 1.5 now is going to get just compressed down. And we've only got a few peaks to deal with there, so it shouldn't make too much difference. Let's have a look and see what we end up with after I've done that. What you never want to do is compress super hard. You know, if you start compressing the entire mix, then you're going to get this real pumping sound. It's not going to sound good. Refer back to my video about levels when you're DJing. And the same thing applies here. If you hit a really hard compressor across the whole mix and everything is getting squashed down, your breakdowns and so on will sound really loud and all the actual impact of your drops and so on will be lost. You know, everything's going to be fighting to get through that brick wall. So you need to try and keep the compression to an absolute minimum you want it to sound clean don't forget we're dealing with files that are already compressed here so you know this is all compressed and limited mastered material that we're mixing so we're just trying to put an extra little sheen on it keep it a bit more there you go so that's chopped off a fair bit now 
I would probably, in this case, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to go back in, I'm going to affect, I'm going to normalize to zero again. So that's going to bring up these peaks up to zero. Because all it's done, you'll see the body of the track here, the re all of the actual mix is looking the same apart from these big peaks, which I want to get rid of. There we go. Now, I think that's actually going to, if I do minus 1.5, that's probably going to start chopping off a bit too much. But let's have a little look. So let's hit limiter again. And yeah, I think that's going to take off too many. Let's just check out these levels here. So when I'm playing through now, so the bulk of it is still only hitting about minus three. So I'm going to try that. Let's try that now. Let's go in effect, limiter. I'm going to do that minus 1.5 dB again. Let's do it. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So we can see it's chopped off those large peaks. Let's zoom in on some of those. Now in this case, I've probably gone a little bit too far. I wouldn't want to compress down quite that far across the board, but actually you can hear even on those very big peaks now. It's not done too much damage to the sound. And it's helping it stay pretty consistent. So yeah, this is basically, that's really all I'm going to do. Now, a lot of people will ask about EQing and so on. I would say, unless you've got a real problem with the sound, don't reach for the EQ at all. If you're going for some advanced mastering stuff, you want to do multi-band compression, you know, different frequency bands, then that's one thing. But if you're just dealing with a straight up master of a DJ mix, I would say don't really mess with the EQ because overall it's going to sound pretty constant. Anyway, any EQing that you're doing, you should do during the actual mixing process. So as you can see, I like to keep it fairly simple in Audacity, you know, in, in any post-production software with a mix. We are dealing with pre-made, you know, pre-mastered music. We don't want to go in and mess with it too much. If you start messing with EQs and compression and so on far too much, you will end up with a mix that actually sounds worse than when it was when you just recorded it. So try and keep any tweaking to an absolute minimum. Top it and tail it very nicely and then make sure everything is normalized to that minus 1.5 dB if you're going to convert to MP3. If you're not converting to MP3, I would suggest maybe just, you know, stick to um, put it up, normalize it actually to, you know, minus 0.2 or something like that, just below the actual threshold. You don't want to hit anything actually peaking and, and actually clipping over the top. But if you're just going to stick with the lossless, you're burning to CD or something like that, then yeah, just keep it to say minus 0.2 dB and that will give you the loudest sound possible for your output. Now, of course, there's a lot more you can do in terms of post-production. We could go in and add samples and drops and all kinds of things like that. You could do 5.1, all, all kinds of madness you could get into. Um, we'll be looking at some of that with Ableton Live at a bit later in the series. But right now, if you just got your basic mix recorded, you want to master it so it's nice and clean, then this should do the job for you very nicely. Don't go too hard. Don't go too far with it. Just keep it simple. Keep it straightforward. There we go then, a few tips on mastering your mixes for that smooth, professional, consistent sound to share with your listeners. Next time on Mixtape Masters, we're talking about something completely different, talking about making a mix from scratch in Ableton Live. I'm gonna tell you some good reasons why you might want to do that and some cool stuff that you can achieve by doing so as well. So, stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.